Nobody cares if someone dies of a heart attack or someone dies of a vehicular accident. That doesn't get boasted on Facebook. But when someone dies and says it's COVID, it's splashed all over. Is it because someone who dies of COVID is more important or it serves the agenda of some? Singapore's population is 5.7 million. The total population of Cebu is 5.1 million. That's one similarity. Second similarity, we have no other agenda but the welfare of the people. Singapore is known for its very efficient, professional, and corruption-free kind of governance. We strive to do the same here in the province of Cebu. Let me read you this article, Singapore's surprising new plan to live with COVID revealed. Singapore has announced it will soon fundamentally change how it manages the pandemic. A country that has been one of the world's most successful at combating COVID-19 has announced it will soon fundamentally change how it manages the pandemic. The city of Singapore has stated COVID will be treated like other endemic diseases such as flu. Finally, a city-state that gets it. Well, I'd like to think we got it too because we've been managing COVID so far. But of course, some uh, personalities would just hope to pounce at whatever opportunity they could to put Cebu in a bad light. As I said, the city of Singapore city-state of Singapore will now treat COVID like other endemic diseases such as flu. There will be no goals of zero transmission. Quarantine will be dumped for travelers and close contact of cases will not have to isolate. You know what's happening now? We keep on testing. Someone tests positive, even if it's asymptomatic, immediately the entire family is isolated. A member of media keeps on texting me. They are all isolated. They have nothing, no symptoms, nada, but they cannot work. And while they cannot work, there's no food. So now they're accepting laundry so that they can buy a kilo of rice. You know, it is so fine to talk about policy of isolate every first contact. You forget that most of them are what you call isang kahig, isang tuka. What you earn for that day is what you will buy rice with, what you will feed your family with. And you isolate this person for 14 days. That's 14 days of his income capacity, income making capacity. He cannot make any money to buy for his family's basic necessities. So Singapore gets it. Quarantine will be dumped for travelers and close contact of cases will not have to isolate. It also plans to no longer announce daily case numbers. We are so fixated on announcing, sometimes with much glee, with much excitement, each time, double digit increase. It seems as though it's all that we are waiting for so that we can make news and headlines. But Singapore says, announce daily case numbers. Why? Plain and simple. It does not achieve anything. It creates a misimpression because most of these are anyway asymptomatic or mild. So, why the need to broadcast each and every day the number of positive cases that have been tested? You know what they will do? They will just monitor those that are in the hospital that actually need hospital care. Then they will be monitoring their hospital system. Senior Singaporean ministers have said it is the new normal of living with COVID. The bad news is that COVID-19 may never go away. This is what I've been saying all along. You want zero COVID? Maybe it's time for you to go to paradise. There are no diseases there. But for as long as you are in this challenging world of ours, there will always be diseases. You cannot hope to achieve zero COVID in the same way that we have not achieved zero tuberculosis nor zero dengue 
zero measles, even though we have vaccination every month, every year. Zero polio, it's made a comeback. And yet you want to achieve zero COVID, and you wait for that day, and in the meantime, we devastate an economy, and we put so many people out of work. So, Singapore's Trade Minister Gan Kim Yong, Finance Minister Lawrence Wong, and Health Minister Ong Ye Kung said in an editorial, as I said, the bad news is that COVID-19 may never go away. The good news is that it is possible to live normally with it in our midst, which is what we have been trying to do and we are successfully achieving here in the province of Cebu. We reopened tourism last year when Cebu gained its MGCQ status in July. So it's been over a year now we are still on MGCQ. Our resorts are full, especially on weekends. But what is the average of positive active cases? According to the DOH claim of 800, 871, that's 27 per 100,000 because we're 3.2 million. I'm sorry for those that are hoping and praying for a surge or a third wave. That is not going to happen. You know why? Because we have been employing the two-pronged approach. Something that perhaps some people up there should start thinking about. According to these three ministers, Minister of Finance, Health, and Trade, the virus will continue to mutate and thereby survive in our community. And so are we going to jump at every possible variant that you suddenly, by genome sequencing, discover? That is the nature of all viruses. They mutate and mutate and mutate, and there will be variant after variant. I am really waiting. We have now have the Delta Lambda. I am waiting for the Tau Gamma Rho <laughs> variant. It says here, Singapore never got to zero. Now doesn't want to. Like most countries, Singapore had an initial peak of cases last year topping out at 600 cases a day in mid-April. Following a smaller wave in August, COVID-19 hasn't cleared up since. However, the nation of 5.7 million has had a steady undercurrent of 20 to 30 cases every day. The nation has recorded 35 deaths in total because they have an excellent health system and they have an honest assessment of true and real covid deaths, not including motor vehicular accidents. Singapore has strict border controls in place with most countries, including tests on arrival, hotel quarantine, and stay-at-home orders. It's not dissimilar to Australia, which, by the way, some of you wish to always cite, see, Australia has locked down, we should do the same. But Singapore varies the demands on travelers depending on the risk. But, this is more important, but all that would be eventually done away with under the plan put out by Ministers Kung, Yong, and Wong to make up Singapore's COVID-19 multi-ministry task force. Every year, many people catch the flu. The overwhelming majority recover without needing to be hospitalized and with little or no medication. And that's what's happening also with so many... <laughs> Those of you who are watching me now are aware of this. Even you yourself, you have had some symptoms and you recover with little or no medication. But a minority, especially the elderly and those with comorbidities can get very ill and some succumb. That's with the flu, that's with other diseases because that's life. There will always be deaths. But I'm just wondering, nobody cares if someone dies of a heart attack or someone dies of a vehicular accident. That doesn't get boasted on Facebook. But when someone dies and says it's COVID, it's splashed all over. 
Is it because this someone who dies of COVID is more important? Or it serves the agenda of some? According to these ministers, we can't eradicate it, but we can turn the pandemic into something much less threatening, like influenza or chickenpox, and get on with our lives. Instead of monitoring COVID-19 infection numbers every day, we will focus on the outcomes. How many fall very sick are those that can now be categorized under severe and critical? How many in the intensive care unit? How many need to be intubated for oxygen and so on? This is like how we now monitor influenza. So I ask the powers that be, those that come up with these daily updates, like Dr. Vergeri, what's your game plan? What's the end game? What is your roadmap towards graduating into a new normal? Are we going to continue to focus on chalking up numbers and talking about variants and doing a back and forth for quarantine classifications atras abante or isn't it time that we take a cue from Singapore where Singapore has stated that they will live with COVID well this is what we've been doing all along here in the province of Cebu. I have seen the suffering of so many precisely because of the restrictions of COVID, not because of COVID, but because they have lost their livelihoods and their jobs and their businesses. And I cannot allow that to continue to happen to my beloved Cebuanos. So I'm going to take a cue from Singapore it bears notice that this island state, this city state, is showing the world how to live with COVID. I hope that puts to rest this issue. Let me repeat, we're managing COVID here in Cebu. We've learned from all that has happened in this over a year learning period. If at this point we keep repeating the same tired old phrases that we've been saying at the start of this pandemic, then it's either we you haven't learned anything or you wish for COVID to continue till kingdom come. And if that is the case, then there must be another agenda. <laughs>